All suicides are the result of some form of trauma. To presume otherwise is to not understand suicidality. I've worked in suicidality and suicide prevention and suicide postvention for 15 years. I've led a Commonwealth Task Force for three and a half, two and a half years in suicide postvention across the nation and I helped get that off the ground. And I've worked in, for the National Suicide Prevention Trauma Recovery Project as its coordinator for the last two and a half years. I've written hundreds of articles published on suicidality. Let's understand the extensiveness of uh, suicidality first and I'll inverse the usual statistics that are actually out there. One in 50 Australians, that's 2%, one in 50 deaths of Australians is suicide. One in 50 deaths of Australians is suicide. For the migrant born from other than English backgrounds, one in 38 are suicides. For the First Nations people, one in 17 deaths is a suicide. And it's gone up every year for the last decade. It's gone up, it's a tragedy beyond we're at a loss for words. But one in 50 for all Australians, 2%. Think of all deaths, Australians, and 2%. That's an abomination. That's hideous reprehension. And we do very little about that other than posit frameworks, reports that are hollow, and uh, no, nothing has culminated or led from that. The missing link in terms of suicidality is outreach. Because the majority of people who suicide, they come from the lowest quintile or the lowest fifth of income base. They are the poorest amongst us, the highest suicidality and the highest level of self-harms rates. That's not to diminish those who live above the poverty line because it affects everyone, it affects everyone. But the highest rates are those without agency, those who live below the poverty line and the more crushing their poverty, the higher their rates of suicide. 